it was the late 70s um, and it was an incredibly energetic time for music um, innovative new new music was coming out all the time people back back at that time could almost listen to a record and know which studio it was done at from the sound of the drums or from the mixing a lot of the other studios were a little bit more stiff a little bit more of a corporation or an institution and a little more formal way of approaching music trident was very experimental it was um it was a whole different approach we were encouraged to be individuals i mean the level of work had to be beyond reproach trident we were pushed by ourselves and by the reputation of the place just to try and be more unique you had to deliver the job you know you couldn't mess around but people expected us to do something different one of the biggest lessons i learned back then was about having a concept having a plan obviously it was different times we didn't have unlimited tracks at first when i'd started it was 24 track and then trident became 48 track um so two 24 track machines synced together in effect it was 46 track the original guys that had come in in the early 70s roy thomas baker uh ken scott tony visconti dave henschel uh gus Dudgeon, you know with Elton john and genesis and queen and bowie and all of those guys t-rex and lou reed those guys had defined the way that trident went about sound and understood sound and the work ethic and the dedication um, and the focus. I was chef builder for three months, I was a tea boy for six months and then within kind of nine months I, I was on sessions as a tape op which was great and then the route was as a tape op you know sitting at the back of the room running the tape machine you know not making a sound if you needed to use the the toilet, you you know, the, the session would stop because you were the one running the machine. So you'd sit with your legs really tightly crossed for the most part of the day, you know, waiting for a moment, you know, to take a break. Um, so through tape op, then you'd be given more responsibility and maybe get involved a little bit in the mixing. Um, I became senior tape op, then a, an engineer, well, like a second engineer. I had the great opportunity to work a lot with um, Mike Stone who had engineered the Queen albums for Roy Thomas Baker and I worked with Mike as his assistant for quite a while over a period of a couple of years a lot of different albums uh, some crazy albums uh, four Kiss albums and then my early my first mix experience was um, when I was actually allowed to sit at the big desk with the grown-ups and actually be a part of the mixing was um, with Rush on Hemispheres and then Permanent Waves um, four of us at the desk shoulder to shoulder ten faders each uh, myself, Terry Brown, Getty and Alex just playing through the song playing through, playing through maybe eight hours just on the intro and it was an amazing organic way to learn I always felt uh, a great awareness for what had gone on before for the legacy and that if I was now going to become part of that story or a cog in the wheel or just part of the next generation, that the weight of what had gone before me was always very present in my mind. I still have like the, the shadow behind me just pushing me to not just get the best that I can be, but still carrying the legacy of the guys that created the Trident sound and the Trident method and the appreciation of music, the beauty for music, and the understanding of sound and arrangement and performance.